Mario Kart 8 takes everything we've experienced thus far and expands on it with a fluid online multiplayer, more characters than ever, and the most tracks we've seen in any Mario Kart game. Let's take a look at all the different tracks in part 8 of our Mario Kart retrospective. We've partnered up with Happy Kids for this series, so download the app and watch for free. Welcome back everyone, it's Abdallah here with even more Mario Kart Retrospective. Welcome to episode 8, with none other than Mario Kart 8 right over here on the Nintendo Wii U. Remember this gamepad? Yeah, it was so fun. I remember playing on this thing and it had like a screen in the bottom over here, and you would look down and you would look up, and it was just a really fun time. Mario Kart 8, arguably one of the best, if not the absolute best, because of all the sheer amount of content with in there and of course we're going to showcase every single level within the base game now i say the base game because we're going to be talking about mario kart 8 and not necessarily the mario kart 8 deluxe booster course pass that'll be next episode so definitely stay tuned for it but of course we'll be playing on nintendo switch because the nintendo switch version of the mario kart 8 and mario kart 8 deluxe are very, very similar, if not the exact same thing, minus a few item switches and this, that, or the other. But anyway, so I'm excited for it. What we're gonna be doing is going through the base game, all 48 tracks within Mario Kart 8 on Nintendo Wii U. And of course, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on Nintendo Switch. So it's gonna be a fun time. Let's jump on into it, one lap in each of the courses, and we'll go from there, enjoy. And here we are, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and as we've said before, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe really expands on the previous iteration of Mario Kart 8 on Nintendo Wii U. So, what we're going to be doing for demonstration purposes is showcasing Deluxe instead. So, here's what we got going on. We got the original 48 tracks within the game. You guys can see the entire roster over here has a lot of characters, and at the time of recording, there is absolutely a booster course pack which offers even more tracks and characters available. As you can see over here, all of the Koopa Kids are playable characters. We have Inklings from the Splatoon series. You've got Link from Zelda, Animal Crossing characters, and a boatload more. Anyway, we're going to jump in, play as Mario, and then continue on over here. As you can see, there's going to be tons of different carts and wheels and everything along those lines. This is the ultimate game that has the most customization with everything. And if you really want to take a look at the deep stats, of all of your carts in order to find a proper build, then you will absolutely have a fun time with this. But anyway, we're going to go with normal. We're going to go with uh, Super Glider over here, and it's going to be pretty basic. So anyway, excited for it. Excited to show you all of these cups over here. So for today's episode, I'm going to focus on the original base game. Of course, for the part two of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, we'll go into the booster course pass, which has a lot more content for you. Anyway, let's jump on in. We're going to showcase everything inside the mushroom cup right over here. We got, uh, what, Mario Kart Stadium, Water Park, Sweet Sweet Canyon, and Thwomp Ruins. Here we are at Mario Kart Stadium. This is the first level of the entire game, so a lot of people know this one pretty well. Anyway, the boost is going to be directly after two, and you'll see over here that the game has a lot better graphics than before. You'll also notice with this game right over here is that the mini turbos actually come back right over here. So as, as long as you are holding that mini turbo button around turns you can get a blue mini turbo which is the base one if you turn it and then hold it for a little bit longer those sparks turn yellow and then if you hold it completely all the way around you'll be able to get the ultra mini turbo right over that way now this game right over here you're going to want to keep an eye out for all sorts of different coins on the map and just like that you're all set with the very first level and here we are at Water Park. Yeah, this one's actually a theme park that we're gonna be driving through. There's some fun underwater sections, which really takes a nod from Mario Kart 7. Remember that game really innovated the driving ability of going underwater. So you can see right over here in this way, we'll do exactly that, is going right under here and potentially going through. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about this game is the gimmick of anti-gravity. When the wheels turn out to the sides over here, you'll notice that we're in a particular section of the map where we would normally fall down. So the big gimmick here is using that anti-gravity section. You'll see right over this way that we are going to also continuously use glider portions, just like in Mario Kart 7, and continue on straight there to the end of the lap. This is Sweet Sweet Canyon. This level has a whole bunch of gingerbread characters in there. Everything's 
probably edible. I don't know if I would eat these graham cracker roads or these strawberry frosting out of bounds areas, but nonetheless, the level is very cool. You'll see that we have a very awesome cannon with a nice view of the entire, like, gingerbread cake castle. No idea what that is, but it's really beautiful. You can see a little underwater section right over this way, and then we'll start seeing some hot fudge right along the sides over here. So if you wanted to boost through the hot fudge, you can easily do so. Those cones are made out of literal ice cream cones. And then right over here is a spot where you can take something called the donut cut all the way to the left over there. If you had a mushroom, you could easily breeze through that section and then just trick off of here for the end of the lap. Here's Thwomp Ruins. This level actually changes the more that you play it. Specifically on lap three, there's a glider portion that comes on board. Anyway, there's a huge shortcut that you can take right over to the left through the grass area there. Then there will be a ramp that will allow you to simply jump right back onto the track. And as you can see on the right hand side over here, if you wanted to get some additional boost panels, you can easily do so by going anti-gravity mode. You can see right over that way in the middle, that's where the secret glider portion gets uncovered as the laps go on. But ultimately it's fastest if we go this way right over here. Anyway, we want to collect as many coins as possible. You can get a maximum of 10 in order to unlock your maximum speed stat. You'll also see right over there that there's an off-road shortcut Final glider section over here. If you want to collect one more coin, you can do a trick off of that and finish off the lap. Next up, we have the Flower Cup, home to some really, really iconic levels. Let's check it out. And we've made it to Mario Circuit. Every Mario Kart game has one. This one is pretty great because it's in, it's like a figure eight. It's a very interesting track, and you'll be able to really see the gimmick of this level come through. You'll notice that there's going to be some Goombas in the way. This is where the anti-gravity section, you're literally on the underside of the track. But it doesn't look that way from our point of view. But if you ever looked at a replay of the game, you'll notice that we are literally on the underside. Really awesome. Anyway, coming on this way, you're going to see a bunch of opportunities to collect some coins and do some Ultra Mini Turbos straight through here. Here's a twisty bridge. And then if you wanted to take a shortcut through this off-road section, you could easily do so on the right-hand side over there. And then watch out for the Goomba Towers as they will try to hit you on your way to the finish line. Here we are at Toad Harbor. This level, oh my gosh, I love this level. It's just, it reminds me of like San Francisco. And I think they take a little bit of inspiration from it. Anyway, you can see the harbor has a lot of different boats this way. And as you can see right over here, you'll be able to do some tricks. And honestly, if you want to go on top of those little awnings, you can easily do so. Anyway, uh, this comes into a little split right over this way. Don't worry, you can take this top path that it goes a little bit quicker. And you can start a mini turbo over here in order to continuously going without uh, hitting any walls. Anyway, you can see the trolleys over this way. Do not touch the trolleys as they will spin you out. There's a couple different areas right over this way that you can go on the side walls. But honestly, staying through to this area over here is going to be the fastest. Anyway, you can take a little left shortcut right over that way. Or you can take a little right grass cut straight over that way in order to finish off the level in style. Don't get too scared, we're over here at Twisted Mansion, the obligatory ghost level of the game. You guys have seen the previous episodes of the retrospective, right? There's always like a ghosty level with some booze. Anyway, you can see that this place is a little haunted and it has some crazy areas. You can see there's a little library over there. If you take the cut towards the left, you'll be able to shave off a lot of uh, track right over here. For some reason, we go into an underwater section over here. Oh my gosh, the anti-grab is so fun. Anyway, stick to either one of these sides. It's called Twisted Mansion for a reason. Either you're going to be on the bottom section or the side section. Either way. These boos don't do anything to you. They're just aesthetic. But hold your mini turbo right over this way all the way through. Watch out for these little ghosts that are in these little sections there. Because they will smash you if you end up landing underneath that hammer. Here we are at Shy Guy Falls. We are literally gonna go all the way up a waterfall and go down it at the same time. Oh, this is gonna be so fun for you guys. So a lot of anti-gravity uh, sections in the game that just really push the boundaries of what you can and can't do in the realm of Mario Kart. So the gimmick is so good. Anyway, right over here, you'll see that we are going up the waterfall. There's going to be boost panels over here that will help us in our endeavors to do so. And then once we're on top of the waterfall, we're just going to U-turn over here and then start going through the water on the way down into a glider section. Check 
check this out. Boom! You can pick and choose if you want to go the down ways or if you want to go the top ways, depending on what you want. There's a big shortcut that you can take towards the right hand side over there to cut off a little bit of track. But right over here is a very hard turn if you're not holding that mini turbo. But anyway, you made it. Good job. Next up is the Star Cup with even more iconic levels. Let's dive into it. Here we are, time to catch a flight. We are at the airport, the Sunshine Airport right now. One of my favorite levels because there's actually a plane that we're gonna go in. There's a plane that will take off and it's just, it's so cool. Look at this. We're over here in the area going underneath a plane. We'll also be going through a plane in this section. Check this out. Directly through. No idea why there's an open plane over here, but we just went through that. Anyway, really awesome tricks this way. We're going to be collecting some coins, a little boost right over here, taking off. Boo! Like we have our own wings. Anyway, here's a very fun little U turn that's anti gravity. Hold a mini turbo all the way through here, and we are going to go in for a landing. Look at that. It's like we are a plane. All right, so right over here is the baggage claim. If you really want to, you can do a trick through there and uh, yeah, make your way to the very end. Looks like we're gonna be meeting some underwater creatures here at Dolphin Shoals. Excited for it because there's tons of cheap cheap and a very familiar face if you've played through Mario 64. Yeah, yeah, Dire Dire Docks if you remember that for sure. Anyway, coming through right over here, it's a majority like an underwater track. There's a couple different pipes over this way, so you do want to do some tricks off of these pipes this way here. Uh, and you'll see a gigantic eel. Ooh, don't get too afraid of it. All you have to do is continuously like trick off of its little fin right on its back, and you get a lot of speed over there. Uh, moving over here, you'll be able to see we come out for a little breather, winding turn here, and then we are going to fly towards the one of the last areas of the map. If you do have a mushroom, you can cut straight through the right over here in the off-road section. But other than that, we're going right back into the water. What if an entire Mario Kart level was on a disco ball? Yeah, welcome to Electrodrome. This level is actually pretty fun. I like it a lot because there's a lot of music and it's just a really fun time. Everyone's partying. It's, it's really just a big dance party. If you take a look at the giant Jumbotron, you can see all the Koopas and Shy Guys that are dancing around. And the majority of this level is going to be uh, with the anti-gravity section, so I love that. Anyway, you can pick and choose which section you want to do. There's going to be some different items as you're playing through these levels. If you hit these in the middle over here whenever you're in anti-gravity, you'll be able to do a spin boost right over there, so pretty easy. You can hear the different notes that come through as you're playing. And all we got to do is be all set. If you take a look to the left, you can cut off the off-road section behind those gray pipes with a mushroom and boost through to the end. We're here at Mount Wario. This level is one of the levels that have sections instead of laps. So we're just going to go through the entire thing for you. We start off literally in a helicopter. We drop out at the top of the mountain here. And then of course what we're going to be doing is making our way straight down this mountain. You can see there's going to be some ice areas here. Feel free to trick off of any of that. I'll show you a really fun shortcut that you can do without a mushroom and it should definitely be part of everyone's uh, little motions here. Check this out. Whoa yeah easy cut. So we're going to be going inside the cave in the second lap or section. What you can do is you can abandon those little areas there and you can actually come right inside this area here in order to get a little bit of a water boost as you're going through the section so yeah jump off get into the water as fast as possible because it's going to make you go a lot faster anyway coming through this area here's the wario dam and uh, as you can see there's a lot of water gushing through it we want to be able to hit any of those boost panels you can see we're anti-gravity, so turn your head and you can see that we're going to be coming straight through this way. Uh, this one's going to be one of the fastest areas here. Even if you don't have a mushroom, the glider section will more than make up for it because right now we're going to go through the entire forest. The forest is very scary because you can get launched off of your trajectory and bounce into a tree just like that. Oof, two trees, yow. One might say I got treated. Anyway. We're gonna make our way through. This is the final lap over here. It's like a giant ski resort. There's going to be little flags that you can go in between and there's going to be little bunny hills too. So this is exactly like we're skiing down a giant mountain. So absolutely love that. This uh, returns from Mario Kart Wii, if you remember that one level, DK Summit, uh, had a lot of those little snow bumps. 
Anyway, it's the final area here. There's a lot of boost panels, so don't miss them. Turn left and right. We got a fun little glider section over here where we can get some mad airtime in order to last our way down this way. If you have a mushroom, you can cut through this left section of snow right over there and make our way to the finish line. Yeah, we're gonna spin right out here. Excellent, and everyone's cheering us on. Next up is the Special Cup, home to a very exclusive Rainbow Road. Let's dive into it. We're way above in the sky, of course, in Cloud Top Cruise. If you can see, we're on top of like a giant beanstalk and there's paratroopas all over the place. We're gonna be bouncing on some of these drums over this way and making our way through. So yeah, just be careful because you can easily fall off if you're not careful. Anyway, you got a lot of different areas that you can go through this way, but now you'll see that we are on top of a airship. Yeah, this is an airship from Bowser, apparently. So anyway, we're gonna be blasted through a rain cloud over here. So the rain cloud, oh man, you can see that it's going to be electrifying all of these boost panels. But if you're fast enough, you can assess ahead which one of these is going to be the electrified one so that you don't get shocked. Anyway, we're going to round up over here. Of course, I'm going to take this little leaf cut super easily. And that is it. Here we are at Bone Dry Dunes. This used to be a gigantic lake, apparently, but now it's a desert and there's a lot of shy guys floating around too. So with this level, we'll definitely want to be mindful of all the sand. You can see these toads over here that are throwing some coins because they're somehow sailing. Anyway, desert is over here. What we want to do is do our mini turbos just about right. This is where we tend to lose traction. Watch out for the skeleton piranha plant over this way. And if you're fast enough, you can go through this section right over here, which is the fastest way through. Anyway. Going through this way allows you to get a little bit of a glider cut. If you're good, you can go the top route, no worries, because we're gonna keep on going through this way. There's going to be some dry bones on the course over here, so watch out for them. If you have a mushroom, you can take a little shortcut towards the very end and potentially win. We finally made it to Mario Kart 8's iteration of Bowser's Castle, and this one does not disappoint. Look at that, the gate just raised up for us and we're going straight into it. As you can see over here, there's going to be different Bowser statues. On the second lap, it actually shoots lasers at you, so be very careful. In this section, there's going to be a triple fire bar and a swinging mace that we have to dodge as we are going down this way. Watch out, right over here, triple fire bar again. I'm gonna opt to go right over here towards this way. Hopefully I don't get smushed by that hand. Oh, we just narrowly made it. There was a giant fiery stone Bowser over there that was punching the track. Anyway, as you can see over here, there are going to be uh, some fire pillars over there. Whoa, do not get hit by that. And we are on the last portion. Now there's going to be giant boulders over this way. If you do have some mushrooms, you can cut off a little bit of the off-road section of the map and continue on towards the finish line. And here we are at one of the most unique rainbow roads in Mario Kart history, Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 8. Man, we are in outer space and we're on top of a space station satellite. You can see there's like a blooper spaceship over there. You'll notice that this does take a page from the original uh, Rainbow Road uh, because there's not a lot of ledges. So you have to be very careful so you don't get hit. Uh, right over this way, you'll see that there are going to be two different paths. You wanna go on the green path because it's gonna push you forward versus the red path, which will essentially push you back. Uh, of course, there's going to be another split over here, winding turns with anti-gravity sections. This one's going to be one of the better shortcuts that you can do in the game. If you hop right over this way, you can easily go through and continuously go. Anyway, right over here, there's going to be some boost panels. Of course, if you keep it tight towards the left, you'll be all set and ready to go for one of the best tracks in the game. So all of the unique levels from Mario Kart 8 are done. Now they're going to reintroduce the retro tracks. And we're going to start off with the Shell Cup and see some familiar tracks in case you guys have been paying attention to the previous episodes. We made it to the country. This is Moo Moo Meadows. Of course, we'll be able to see so many different cows and the cows will actually cross the street. So you have to be aware of that. Anyway, welcome to it. Moo Moo Meadows is a remake uh, of a cow themed level, of course. Uh, you can see over here that the cows are just grazing on the first lap, but on the second lap, they'll actually start moving around. You'll notice that there's gonna be plenty of room for you to use some mushrooms on the left or the right of that section. Of course, right over here is going to be a pretty fun part where you can launch yourself straight forward, do some tricks off the Monty Mole Hills, and then make your way all the way through right over here at the end of the track, easy. 
Here we are at the Game Boy Advance Mario Circuit. This one totally got a glow up, and you'll see exactly why I say that. This level is one of my favorites because there's so many different grass shortcuts that you can take with mushrooms in order to catch up. So, in the event that luck doesn't go your way, you can easily cut through. Anyway, right over here is an anti-gravity section that allows you to really U-turn your way through. Uh, cutting through over here is tons of mini turbo areas, so if you're learning how to play this game, definitely master this track because there's a lot that you can do. Watch out for the oil slicks over there, of course. If you do have a mushroom, you can cut through that area, and then there's going to be a boost panel over there on the right-hand side, just like it was in the old game. If you remember Mario Kart DS, Cheap Cheap Beach was definitely an iconic level, and this is holding true to exactly what it looked like. Of course, it's a glow up, right? Years later, you're going to be able to see it's the exact same concept. Nice boardwalk at the beginning, nice glider section over here, and we're going to make our way through the beach. That's right. There's going to be a easy boost over here, and if you do have some uh, shortcuts or if you have any mushrooms or anything like that, you can take this section right over this way in order to continuously go through. There's a lot of coins underwater over here, so keep your lines tight as you go through this final stretch. Now, if you do have a mushroom, you'll be able to boost towards the left over this way to cut off that dirt and then give yourself two little jumps as you finish off the lap. Awesome. I know you remember the N64 version of Toad's Turnpike. Welcome to the version in Mario Kart 8. This one is so fun because there's so many things that you can do as far as dipping your way out of the cars. You can see there's an anti-gravity section with some boosts, but if you want the fastest times possible, what you're gonna need to do is keep it tight all the way to the left and right edges. Now, instead of items being on the left side over there, there's gonna be a whole slew of coins that you can get in order to get to your top speed of 10. Anyway, uh, coming on over this way is going to be pretty fun. Just watch out for all of these different cars. There's a surfboard on the back of that truck over there that you can easily trick off of if you want to. And on the left, there's another anti-gravity section in case you want to boost your way through. But yeah, watch out for these cars because if you don't, you might get hit and lose a lot of time. Next up is the Banana Cup with even more levels that are totally looking really sharp. So let's jump into it. Here we are at Dry Dry Desert, home of so many off-road shortcuts. The entire level is just about off-road, so make sure you have some good traction on your cart, otherwise you're going to be slip sliding away. Anyway, coming through this way, you'll start seeing all the different pokies that want to be your friend. All they want to do is exactly that, so you can see them bending over that way. If you're good, you can kind of thread the needle and go underneath them to collect some coins. And just like in the previous iteration, there's going to be a gigantic hole in the middle over here, so don't go inside there. Yeah, it's very unforgiving. You do not want that. Anyway, you'll see the pillars start falling down. You can absolutely trick off of them if you're good enough. There's going to be a little oasis section right over here that you can do a couple different tricks. So yeah, watch out for that. If you have mushrooms, the entire right-hand side of this last turn over here can easily be cut off thanks to the boost and speed. It's almost like we're back at the beginning with Super Nintendo Donut Plains 3. Yeah, I remember this level. It was hard, and there was a lot of off-road and water sections that made it really, really interesting. But luckily for us, we don't have to worry about that here in Mario Kart 8 because we can go underwater and not have Lakitu worry about us. So here's the broken pillar. Of course, you can come on out, or you can take that section really, really tight towards the left and then boost your way out of it. Right over here is going to be a little slippery due to the water and traction, but anyway, keep on going through, watch out for the Monty Moles that do show up, and make your way as tight as you can over this way. You'll notice a lot of off-road areas where you can use mushrooms too. Here we are at one of my favorite levels in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and N64. It's Royal Raceway. Oh my gosh. This one's so fun because I love all of the twists and turns. And I remember in the N64 version where we can jump around and explore Princess Peach's castle. Yeah, that was so cool back in the day. Unfortunately, in this version, you can't go exploring over there. But still, it's going to be a really fun time. Anyway, if you're cool, you can do some uh, very fun tricks like that without any mushrooms, and that's kind of the reason why I really like this level anyway. 
Anyway, we got some really fun boosts all the way up, just like we did in the N64 version. We're going to be gliding over here. Watch out for Toad, because he will absolutely bonk you. Uh, right over this way, of course, is going to be the winding area. If you have some shrooms, you can take some shortcuts to the right, and of course to the left through that grass over that way in order to finish off the level. If you remember Mario Kart 7, you'll remember DK Jungle. Oh man, this one is fun. This one's really fun because I like the little tiki guys that are kind of bouncing around over here. And it does indeed stay true to the original. As you can see, there's going to be opportunities for you to trick a gigantic flower that launches you over here. Watch out for these guys because they will spin you out if you bump into them. Over this way is going to be a very interesting cut that you can kind of take towards the left hand side and then glide through here. If you're good, you can kind of glide and hit all of these boost panels along the way. Here comes a fun anti-gravity section all the way up the side of the wall here. Watch out for the golden banana. And then these screaming statues will absolutely yell at you on your way down. Of course, if you know how to mini turbo around the corner over here, you can easily do so and do a tighter cut towards the finish line. Next up is the Leaf Cup with four recognizable levels from previous iterations of Mario Kart. Let's jump in. Here we are at Wario Stadium from the DS version. I wonder why we didn't get the N64 Wario Stadium. You know, with the one that you could jump off right at the beginning and get like a 10 second lap? Yeah, what happened to that? Anyway, we get stuck with this one, but it's still a very fun level. Lots of ramps, lots of high speed, especially right over here with four of these zippers in a row that you can easily trick off of. Anyway, this section over here is very, very like the one on the Nintendo DS. Watch out for the fire bars as you're going through there. This one's going to be a fun anti-gravity section. The fire bars can indeed spin you out, so be very careful as you're making it through. If you keep towards the left right over this way, you'll be able to do a shortcut towards this off-road section right over here if you had a mushroom. But nonetheless, we're going to be done by gliding straight through to the end. It's getting a little chilly revisiting Double Dash's Sherbet Land. Here we go. This one's actually fun because there are going to be some underwater sections of the track that you can go through. See those cones on the right hand side? You can easily go underneath there and boost out towards another part of the level. Now right over here is going to be pretty interesting because it's a nice interesting cave that uh, we can easily easily go through just like we normally do. Yeah, the traction stat is also very important over here. If you have some mushrooms, you can cut off the right-hand side over that way, and you can cut off the right-hand side right here too. This is the fun part because we're gonna go straight underwater, yeah, in a section that was not really here before, uh, the Nintendo Switch version, oh my gosh. Anyway, boosting right through, and we're gonna do it all over again. Here we are at Melody Motorway or Music Park, depending on which version of the game or which region you're playing. Anyway, if you guys play an instrument at home, then you're going to be able to recognize a lot of different musical instruments over here. Case in point, the piano, we saw a bunch of trumpets, and watch out for this area over here because we do have a couple piranha plants that are on board and they might bite you if you go a little too close to it. So with these little turns over here, you can trick off of the, the little notes on the side over there. We do have a drum this way, so yeah, watch out for that. And then the last part of the area is with these bouncing musical notes. And just like in the previous version, if you do end up landing underneath them, you can potentially get squished, so be very careful. There's a clutch shortcut right over there towards the right where you can jump on the drum and one on the left where you can cut through the grass. If you remember N64's Yoshi Valley with the winding turns and so many different paths, yeah, you're going to absolutely love this one because it's the exact same thing. There's a lot of turns and paths that you can take, but of course there's one that's going to be faster than the majority of them and it's going to be right over this way. As you can see over here, there's going to be opportunities for ultra mini turbos and then of course super mini turbos right over here, which will allow you to move your way through. Now that was the maze portion. Everyone convenes to this specific spot over here. So keep that in mind as you're kind of moving around, this uh, card combo is actually really, really solid in order to get all of these coins. The giant Yoshi egg, of course, makes an appearance again. Just be careful you don't get bowled over by that thing. If you do have some mushrooms, you can take a shortcut towards the right over there, or you can take a shortcut towards the left in order to cut off the last section of track, which was uh, directly right that way. 
And here we are at the Lightning Cup. This has the last four of the main games retro cup. So let's take a look and see how they did with N64 Rainbow Road 2. Here we go. DS TikTok Clock. Just like it was back in the day. And of course, remembering Mario 64. So fun. Anyway, this one has a huge glow up compared to what it was before. There are going to be minute hands and hour hands and everything like that. Pendulums, you name it. You'll be able to see the differences right over here. Uh, the pendulum doesn't necessarily hit you in this one, so you can easily flip into it if you are a little bit off on your timing. This section over here is going to be pretty fun because you can use a glider section here in order to just kind of swoop your way on through. And then you can do some tricks off of these little edges right down that way. Anyway, depending on what lap you are, the minute hand right over here will allow you to actually go up on top of the minute hand and do a little shortcut. And just like in the previous version, we do have this launcher right at the very end. Here we are at Piranha Plant Pipeway. This level is awesome. I love the decor and just the feel of it. You're really going down a pipe. So whenever Mario like transports himself through a pipe, yeah, this is kind of what it looks like, right? Anyway, you can see that there's going to be tons of different piranha plants over here, so just be careful. And there's Goombas that are going to be standing around too, so watch your step. Right over this way is going to be some hairpin turns. You can trick off of those little pipes over there too, so keep that in mind. We're going anti-gravity now as we flip through this little area. Let's take a look. Completely underwater over here. You're going to have to choose left or right because that piranha plant might bite you if you choose wrong. Yeah, we're doing very well. Right over here is pretty fun because we're going to be launching ourselves completely out of here. You can take a shortcut to the left hand side over there in order to cut off the final stretch of the level. Here we are at Grumble Volcano, one of the most dynamic tracks in the entire game because every lap the entire track deteriorates and like literally loses a bunch of surface area. So yeah, and that's due to the actual Grumble Volcano erupting. We're only going to show you the first lap, so you're going to have to play this and see for yourself. Anyway, right over here is going to be two different areas where you can split through, of course, as we know. Hopefully, we can make our way through this section here. There's a flying area if you wanted to go with the glider section. Oh man, there's a lot of areas. You can see the ground entirely grumbling. Oh my gosh. If you have a mushroom, you can take some really, really good shortcuts towards the right-hand side over that way. And then, of course, right over here is going to be the end of the lap. As you progress to the level, there's going to be even more shortcuts that open up. It's time for N64 Rainbow Road, one of my favorite Rainbow Roads in the entire game. Now, they kind of heard a lot of feedback from a lot of the players saying that Rainbow Road on N64 was way too long. And of course, if you've seen the retrospective, then you know exactly how long those laps were. So what they did with this level was they made one lap in the N64 version, the equivalent of three sections. Just like Mount Wario, it's a section-based level. And of course, you can see that there are indeed going to be chain chomps in the area too, but they're just gonna be kind of like floating around, not necessarily chomping towards you. You can see over here that we're gonna be entering the second section of the game, of course, it's still the first lap. Uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine what the game would be like if they made us do three laps through here. So anyway, you'll see that there's going to be some wavy sections that you can indeed uh, trick off of if you really want to. There's going to be a toad train that they're going to be throwing some coins at you. It's a really front runner track. There's no shortcuts. So in my mind, subjectively, I think it's a little boring and uh, I wish there was a way that you could jump off somehow and do a really, really fun shortcut like an N64. But anyway, if you take a look, we're way above the skies. There's going to be a city directly underneath us. And the fireworks are actually a nice touch right over here. You see a Bowser firework. You see a whole bunch of other things too. So, wow. And then there is the city right below us. This is the last section of track right over here. A couple boosts, a glider section, and we are absolutely done with the retro tracks of the game. So a little later on in the life cycle of Mario Kart 8, they gave us the first set of downloadable tracks in the form of the Egg Cup, the Crossing Cup, the Triforce Cup, and the Bell Cup. This is the first set of downloadable content, and boy did it make a splash back in the day. Let's jump into all of these and show you guys the original levels that they came up with, and we'll show you all of the remade levels from previous games. 
One of my favorite levels from previous Mario Karts is none other than Yoshi Circuit. It's in the shape of a Yoshi. How cool does it get after that? Anyway, uh, the level is actually really good, so I'm very, very happy with how they made it. There's going to be your waterfall shortcut in case you wanted to take it over that way. Really not a problem. You can use a mushroom in order to get that, and you can continue going from there. Uh, you'll notice over here that there's going to be a lot of different winding turns that you can kind of mini turbo your way through. If you really want to, you can do this in order to shave off a little bit of track. It's kind of fun. I like doing that. Uh, of course, you can trick off this, and this is going to be one of the last sections of the map. Yes. Anyway, this Mario Motor is no Birdo <laughs> advertisements there. So anyway, really true to the original. Here we go. An NES game called Excite Bike turned into a level in Mario Kart. How crazy is that? Anyway, it's a pretty easy level and a lot of people like it simply because you just tap the R button over here in order to do crazy fun tricks all the way through. Honestly, it's uh, it's it's not even a figure eight. It's just like a loop all the way down. There's going to be your obligatory shortcuts that are off road in the grass over that way. So keep that in mind as you're playing through the level, you want to save some sort of mushroom or boosting item right over at the last clutch turns. Anyway, you'll see that there's going to be tons of different tricks over here. Make sure that you press the R button accordingly. And we are going to zip on through this way with our ultra mini turbo. Boom, there we go. Beautiful, just like that and finish it off. Here's another brand new level in the form of Dragon Driftway. I don't think it's based off of anything in the Mario universe. It's just a really fun way of experimenting with some dragons. Look at this place. It looks so fun. It's so winding too. So anyway, there's going to be a lot of shortcuts right out of this area here. You can kind of boost towards the left over there and you can also boost through this little grass patch towards the right. So keep that in mind as you're playing. You can see that we are in the off-road little upside down sections. So just be mindful of that and collect coins and get these little spinners whenever you can. There's some trick opportunities over here. And if you do have a boost, you can cut directly through all this grass on the right hand side in order to make your way towards the very end with the final trick being right over there. And let's do it again. Taking a page from the F-Zero franchise, we have a level called Mute City. And oh boy, is it fast. This one is a little unconventional when it comes down to collecting coins because there's no coins to be found on the map. Just like in the F-Zero franchise, you're just going to get energy by going onto different energy panels. And that translates exactly the same way here. So what we're going to essentially be doing is landing on these little strips right over here in order to get our coins. There we go. And we got our coins. We're ready to go. So now we have max speed in order to make it. You can cut off a little bit of track right over there on the uh, right hand side. And you can also wind over to the right hand side over that way too. If you pull back, you can actually glide a lot further than if you didn't normally. Anyway, very, very fast track. Our next cup is none other than the Crossing Cup, home of Animal Crossing, the level that's based off of the franchise. It's absolutely so fun. There's four different seasons that you could potentially play. Anyway, let's take a look at it. One of the most hectic tracks is back. Here we go, Baby Park. Shaking my head at this one. As you know, this level right over here is going to be one of the most iconic yet very chaotic levels in the game. It brings it back to the seven lap standard because uh, before when they cut it down, they made it from seven to five and then now it's five to seven. So it's pretty boring to play through when you're just doing it alone right over here in time trials. But of course, if you're playing with a full 12 character roster, there's going to be a lot of items and a lot of shells flying around that'll make you want to not play it. Anyway, cool level. We made it to Cheeseland. This time we're not in outer space or on a moon or on a different planet. We're just on an island or desert area that's made out of cheese. Anyway, there's gonna be a lot of shortcuts, so keep your eye out for them. There's one directly to the right over that way that'll allow you to cut that section of track. Uh, if you wanna hold a mini turbo all the way through here, you can, of course, or you can kinda cut through with a mushroom to the right. 
uh, yeah, to the left hand side over there. And then right over here is going to be a very fun glider section. Watch out for that chain chomp because he will come out and he will bite you. Wow, I'll take a big bite out of you. You'll see a glider panel over that way, which is going to be a singular mushroom that you can do. And of course, that kind of lines you up for another mushroom shortcut towards the left-hand side right over that way, which takes you right past the finish line in the glider section. Very fun. Here's an original track called Wild Woods, where we literally go up an entire tree. It's very cool if you look at it from a different perspective than what we're actually driving on, because if you look at how we're driving over here, it doesn't look any different. Anyway, what's cool about this level is the sheer amount of tricks that you can do. There's a little glider section, a little watery path that goes down, and it looks like we're flying in some sort of shy guy home inside this tree. Very fun. Anyway, you'll see right over this way that if you stay in the water section, you'll get a huge boost forward. There's going to be some lily pads that tend to rotate over this way, and there's going to be one clutch shortcut towards the left over there that you can use a mushroom in order to boost towards the finish line and potentially take over someone's spot. And here we are at the Animal Crossing level. Oh man, can you recognize any of those animal buddies? I bet you can't. Maybe you can. Anyway, I love the franchise and this level really, really pays homage to it. The cool thing about this level is that there's going to be different kind of fruit trees that literally drop fruit on the ground depending on the season. And you can pick those up for a small speed boost. You'll also see little items on balloons, which is very, very Animal Crossing. And you'll also notice that not only is this the summertime over here, but there's also springtime, fall, Winter? All that. Mr. Assetti pops up over here. Of course, he's going to be very mad. You can take a, a little shortcut towards the grass over here, and this is the perfect homage to Animal Crossing. For the second half of the first set of downloadable content for Mario Kart is going to be none other than the Triforce Cup. This one's really fun because we have something called Hyrule Circuit, which is, of course, Zelda. So anyway, let's jump into it and take a look at all the levels. All right, here we go at Wario's Gold Mine, one of the very fun tracks on the previous iteration of Mario Kart. And it's very true to the original, too. You'll notice a lot of similarities. It's just, honestly, a visual glow-up, if you think about it. Anyway, uh, you'll notice over here that we've got the big downhill and uphill portion. Watch out for these uh, very tight turns. If you take this a little bit tight over here, you can do a very easy <laughs> off-road shortcut straight over that way. Watch out for the swoopers over there. They won't spin you out, but they will bump into you and potentially take whatever item that you're kind of dragging behind, a, be it a shell or whatnot. Anyway, coming on over in this section of the map, you'll notice the actual gold carts. So yeah, they're mining all the gold. They're transporting them wherever they're going. And you can actually boost off of them, which is really fun. So anyway, we're going to be going straight this way and boosting our way out of the section. Right over here, they added a little shortcut that you can kind of do in order to get a little bit more time. And here we are, way back at the beginning of Super Nintendo Rainbow Road. This one is one of the most iconic ones. And it's a little different this time around because the thwomps actually make the roads go crazy. You can do some tricks off of them if you're aligned properly. So just be very careful as you're going around here. There's got some uh, different boost ramps. You can kind of boost through this way in order to get a little bit more air. And yeah, I can't believe I did that on my first try. That's actually a really hard trick to do. Anyway, right over this way, you can take left or right. It alternates, so be very mindful of that. And here's our last turn all the way. Thread the needle towards the middle, do a little trick. You're set and ready to go. And here we are, a brand new original course called Ice Ice Outpost. And you'll see a lot of winding paths and splits that will maybe make you force, force yourself to choose. Anyway, we're going to go green path over this way, and if we really wanted to, we can drop over to yellow path if we wanted, depending on who's racing near us or whatnot. There's going to be some off-road shortcuts to the right-hand side. You can see that little uh, boost ramp over there. And in this section right over here, if you jump off that area, you've got another little uh, section that you can cut off some track on the left-hand side. Right over here is going to be pretty interesting because this one's going to be winding all the way through. I'm going to do a little bit of a lane switch over this way in order to get the faster and tighter section. And then we're going to glide right down here. If I align myself properly, I can do this final cut. Ooh, not too bad. Didn't get the tricks, but still looked cool. And here we are. We finally made it to Hyrule. Yeah, Mario inside Hyrule. It's a Zelda crossover that you never expected. 
Anyway, instead of coins, you can see that there's going to be green rupees over here. So if you're a Zelda fan, you know exactly the sound effects. This is one of the best levels in the entire pack, simply because of how cool it is. Anyway, we're going to go straight over into this castle over here. You see some different, like, soldiers over there as well. And I'm just, oh my gosh, I love this. If you hit this one... Uh, if you hit that one and this one, if you hit all three of those crystals, you'll be able to light up the Master Sword and do a shortcut towards the middle. Right over here in this section, you can cut off some grass to the left and to the right. Watch out for these different types of piranha plants as they will bite you if you're going too slow. And of course, there's a whole bunch of bats too. Anyway, one of the best levels in the game, hands down. And here we are at the last cup of Mario Kart 8, and we've got a lot of retro and two brand new levels, especially an F-Zero level that you're absolutely going to love. Let's check it out. Here we are at Neo Bowser City. This level was one of my favorites on the 3DS version because it was a really cool futuristic area dedicated to Bowser and whoever follows him. So cool. Uh, this level, of course, is a little slippery, so you may be mindful of that as you choose your cart combo to be a little bit more geared towards traction. You'll see over here that we have these winding paths, and of course, there's going to be the inevitable hairpin turns over here. Check this out. This is where the railings end up going away, so be very careful. A lot of people fall down on this last turn over here. Anyway, if you have some mushrooms, you can cut off a lot of section of track all the way to the left-hand side over here. That's a little off-road over that way. Other than that, you can glide on through to the other side over here if you really want to, and uh, yeah, get a boost to continue on. One of the most chaotic levels in Mario Kart Super Circuit has now received a glow up in Mario Kart 8. And it's none other than Ribbon Road. Oh my gosh. It's not as hectic as it was in the previous one with literal zippers all over the places and like huge jumps, but it's still really cool. And I love the fact that we're like micro size in uh, almost it looks like Toy Story to me, right? Like we are these tiny little toys in some kid's room where he set up these winding paths. Anyway, we've got a couple different shortcuts we can take over this way. This one's pretty risky. You can do that in order to kind of jump over that way. You can do the exact same thing again right over here and get the glider a lot faster than normal. Uh, pretty, pretty hard to do those. Right over here, you can do a mushroom shortcut towards the right-hand side to cut off the last bit of track, and you're all set with Ribbon Road. All the modes of transportation are covered in Mario Kart. We've got Sunshine Airport, we've got Toad Harbor, and now we've got Super Bell Subway. We are literally in an underground subway over here, making our way through... Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Take your ticket right over here. We're going to make our way down underground. Now, there's a lot of off-road sections, as you can see over here, so be very careful. And that train will spin you out if you do end up touching it, so don't hit it. There's a lot of winding paths, but honestly, staying underneath here is going to be your fastest bet. Uh, a lot of off-road cuts that you can take over there through the gravel. Here's going to be some boosts over here. Oh, easy peasy. And there's an absolute boss of a clutch shortcut that you can take right over here. I'm just going to do it because I love it. Honestly, save a mushroom for that because you'll gain a lot of spaces. Here we are at the final level of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Let's jump into it. It's none other than Big Blue. A lot of people love this level because of how fast you go, and you're really going downhill for it too. And just like the other F-Zero track, there are no coins on the entire track this way. So what you're going to have to do is keep up with these like pink and purple energy panels that are on the floor that way. There's a couple different spots that you guys can get some. So anyway... Uh, right over this way, I'm going to hold a mini turbo so I can cut through a little bit easier that way. We're going to go with the green in order to get a little bit of a speed boost. We're going to cut through right over here too to make it go a lot faster. And then to get our leftover coins, we're going to come over here. Now you'll notice over here that we are playing in a sectioned level. Uh, not necessarily a level that's based off of um, based off of laps. So anyway, keep that in mind. Here's a fun little shortcut that you can take in order to gain a little bit more speed on your opponents. And here's a winding water slide all the way down. So keep your mini turbos about you as you're going through here. Anyway, we're moving through. This section over here is going to be pretty tough. So pay attention to the boost panels and the arrows. Here's one, two, of course, going over switching lanes to three going over the green one, and making our way through. In case you need more coins, there's going to be another opportunity for you to get some right over here, of course. And we are moving through to the final area. Yes, the final section of track. I'm going to come over here. We're going to come down a little bit. 
We're gonna do this again. Do another little shortcut, switching lanes right on the fly in order to get as many boost panels as we can. Some off-road sections to the left and to the right in case you have mushrooms you can breeze on through. And that, everyone at home, is Mario Kart base game. Absolutely. Oh, there's a lot more than just these levels that we showed you in this episode. So stay tuned. And there you have it, everyone, all of the tracks in Mario Kart 8 on Nintendo Wii U, and of course, in the Switch version of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Our next episode is going to be showcasing the Nintendo Switch version of the game, and that has the exact same content as what we just showed, but an entire booster course pass of brand new levels from Mario Kart Tour and a lot of retro remade levels that we haven't even seen yet. So I'm excited for it. Make sure that you guys tune into it. Don't miss a beat in our entire retrospective. It's going to be so much fun. What did you think? Did you guys enjoy Mario Kart 8? Do you still play this game to this date? I know it's one of the fastest selling Mario Kart games in history. So I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it and I can't wait to see you guys in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It's going to be a great time. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Only on Happy Kids. Free. Fun. Learn.